Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. Today, we're going to look at Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, where Jesus is talking to his disciples about who really is the greatest. Well, we already know who the greatest is, right? Of course, it is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please do us a favor and make sure that you are signing in online so that we know that you are watching. Uh, we track that attendance for you, so we appreciate you letting us know that you are tuning in. So let's get going with our opening song. People hurting, people broken, beaten down and feeling hopeless, wondering if it's gonna always be this way. Who will speak up for the captive, show some love and heal the past, and binds the wounds we think will never go away. If we could be a people on our knees as one before the King, cause we believe all the world starts changing when the church starts praying. Strongholds start to break. Oh, when we pray, prison walls start shaking at the sound of praising. Stepping out in faith Because we will be A people on our knees As one before the King Because we believe Yeah All the world starts changing When the church starts praying Strongholds start to break Oh, when we pray Prison walls start shaking Church starts praying, strongholds start to break. Oh, when we pray, all the world starts changing, and the church starts praying, strongholds start to break. Oh, when we prison walls start shaking at the sound of praise, and nothing stays the same. Oh, when we pray, oh, oh, oh. when we We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now responsibly read Psalm 54. O God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life, they do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. At this time, we pause a moment for our confession and forgiveness. If there's anything that's heavy on our hearts, we ask that you turn those over right now, put them at the foot of the cross, and hear the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he loves and forgives you indeed. So we pause a moment for self-reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul we sing with all the strength I have in me. I will rejoice with every day he gives. I will recall the wonders he has shown in me. His power to heal, his mercy to forgive. We join with angels to sing his praises. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. High as the heavens reached above the earth is your unfailing love, is your unfailing love. For as the east is banished from the west, you took our sins from us, removed our sins from us. How wide, how high is your unfailing love. Our King delights to show compassion to the weak. The deepest needs he loves to satisfy. Throughout the earth, his justice and his mercy speaks, and he will run to meet the victim's cry. From everlasting to everlasting, our youth renewed with every step we take. High in the heavens reached above the earth is your unfailing love, is your unfailing love. For as the east is banished from the west, you took our sins from us, removed our sins from us. How wide, how high is your unfailing love? Though we are dust, moments in eternity, as flowers bloom today and then are gone, we crown our lives with beauty and with dignity. His patient smiles on all who turn to him. From generations to generations will tell the story of his faithfulness. High as the heavens reach above the earth is your unfailing love, is your unfailing love. For as the east is banished from the west, you took your sins from us, removed our sins from us. How wide, how high is your unfailing love? The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 11. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James, chapters 3 and 4. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. 
and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace? Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve and said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, boys and girls, it's Deaconess Kim with a children's message for you today. Have you ever started something, but you didn't finish it? Sometimes that happens to me, especially with craft projects. I'm so excited to start something new, but eventually something else pulls me away and I don't come back. My excitement fizzles out and I never finish what I started. In Sunday school this week, we're learning about King Joash from the Old Testament. When he was young, he was excited to follow God and he tried to lead the people to obey God. But as he grew older, his faith fizzled out. He did not lead the people to follow God like he should have. And there's a lot that can pull us away from God. It might be other people or it might just be our own sinful mind. It might be troubles or hard times or it might even be good times that convince us that we don't need God. But the truth is, just like King Joash, we're not faithful to the end. We fail to follow God. The good news is that God is always faithful, even when we're not. God promised to send Jesus to die for our sins, and he did. He promised that Jesus would rise from the dead, and he did. God promised that Jesus will come back someday and we can have faith. We can believe that he will. God gives us faith to believe in him and he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us follow him. And even when we mess up, when we turn away from God because our faith fizzles out, God is still faithful. No matter what, we can always turn back to God because he loves us so much. This week's challenge isn't just for this week, it's for your whole life. Your challenge is to stay faithful to God no matter what. That might sound like a hard challenge, but remember, God promises to be with us be and to help us. And when we stumble, we have faith that God forgives us because of Jesus. So let's be faithful and follow Jesus to the very end. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much 
for giving me faith. I'm so sorry when I stop following you. Please forgive me and help me follow Jesus to the end. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus, because your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by. Depression, I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn light. Break 
Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters, exiles in the Northland, according to our Heavenly Father's good purposes, strengthened by the Holy Spirit to be obedient in following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we go forward in this place. Grace and peace to you. So we get a rather interesting text today. Had some fun uh, with our Martin Luther Academy chapel with this particular text earlier in the week. You see, it's quite interesting, right? We have Jesus walking with his disciples, and apparently he's overhearing what they're talking about. And apparently they're talking about who's the greatest. We all understand this concept, right, of, of who is the greatest, uh, I had a little fun asking them who was the greatest quarterback, who was the greatest basketball player of all time. And, you know, funny, they only brought up those players currently, whereas some of us of a little older generation would want to throw some of our childhood heroes into that mix. But can you imagine how uncomfortable that conversation really was when Jesus asked them, even though he knows what they were talking about, what were you discussing on the way? Now you see, it, it's not that Jesus didn't want them to be great. In fact, Jesus does want us to be great. He wants us to be great at everything that it is that we do. And he also wanted the same for his followers, that they would see how important it was for them to be good at what he was training them to do. But the greatest aspect, that measurement, well, that's not really what Jesus wanted them to understand amongst themselves. That's not what he had planned for them to be doing. And in fact, when it boils down to it, right, what Jesus is truly saying is, Whose glory is this about? Is this about your glory? Or is this about our Heavenly Father's glory? That's what we really want to do, right? We want to be glorifying God in everything that we do. Now, a little bit more on that later. So, we get this verse. Jesus sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. See, he flips their measurement pretty much on its head. <laughs> Jesus uses these words to help his disciples figure this out. That kingdom work is not about their glory, but it's about God's glory. But let's not be too hard on them. Because we probably fall trapped to the same types of things. We measure greatness in different ways. We don't necessarily see everybody the same. And in the body of Christ, as Jesus is going to point out to them, right? When he puts a child in the midst of them and says, this is the greatest one in that regard. Well, we begin to understand that, that God has blessed each and every one of us with special gifts, and that our measurement is not against one another, well, that's crazy. Our measurement is about what we do and what we're bringing to the kingdom. And remember, Jesus is the one that is equipping his followers. He chose those 12 disciples very specifically because they had different talents and gifts that God had already blessed them with. He picked them to get things going for God's kingdom work. See, Jesus expands a little bit on this servant aspect and helps them to really understand this more deeply when we get to chapter 10. But it shall not be so among you. Again, remember James and John are gunning for the right hand and the left hand sitting with Jesus as he comes into his kingdom. But Jesus kind of shuts that down again. He says, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. 
For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus defines what service is. By laying his life down, by not being served or being expected to be served, but rather he serves by dying on a cross for you and for me. See, this was the Father's will, and Jesus followed it obediently. He followed it to the letter. For you and for me, absolutely, for our forgiveness, he won a place for us for all eternity, but he's also defining service in this action. Again, Mark's gospel says, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and when he is killed... After three days, he will rise. At this point in Mark's gospel, Jesus really begins to lay it out for them, for the disciples, so that they can see that that this is not about glory, certainly not Jesus' glory, as he is crucified on a cross. His body is beyond recognition. There's no glory in that at all, other than the fact that God says this is glory. You see, Jesus is about serious work, right? He has dedicated his life for you and for me by dying on that cross for us. The disciples are going to follow Jesus too. And in fact, each and every single one of them will suffer for the sake of the gospel. But it's not like it's for nothing. Remember, they counted it all joy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ because they understood what it meant to serve. It's an emptying of self and seeing life as being servant to all. That which Jesus won for us, and in the end, it is going to be worth it for us, right? Because we know we're not living for this world, we're living for the life to come. See, Jesus laid this groundwork down early. And we can relate to this too. Jesus said the key to understanding all the parables and the key to understanding what kingdom work is all about is by understanding the parable of the sower. Remember this parable? Remember the sower goes out to sow some seeds and some of the seeds land on the road or the path. Some of them land on the rocky soil. Some of it lands among the thorns, and some of it lands on good soil. Remember, the disciples didn't quite understand what the parable meant at that time. And so later, Jesus explains exactly what this parable means. And for us, In understanding kingdom work, we can go back to this parable once again to understand what God is meaning through this parable for you and for me. The sower sows the word. What does the sower sow? Well, what is the word, right? Well, we know, like from John's gospel, that the word is Jesus. God made flesh. So whether you want to see it as the Word, that is, God's Word, or if you want to see it as the Gospel, which certainly is getting us closer to the point, but certainly what we want to remember we're seeing here is Jesus. And if we look back at the slide again, and these are the ones along the path where the Word is sown. And when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the Word that is sown in them. So what has what is Satan taken away? He's taken away Jesus. He's taken away Jesus from that person. Now, if you're watching today, I'm guessing that Jesus wasn't taken away from you. So, so we certainly don't see this aspect of it. But what we do see is that sometimes when we spread the word, sometimes when we share Jesus, well, it falls upon the path. We remember that it's the Holy Spirit, the one that is doing 
the good work. Doing the work inside of them. That's not our work, but we certainly trust that God's word will not return to him empty. Who knows? Maybe later, that person will once again hear that gospel again and come to faith in Jesus Christ. The rocky soil. Again, so we assume that the word is the same. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, and they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. So what are these tribulations and persecutions? Perhaps we maybe know somebody that has endured something very devastating in their life, and they've lost their faith, or they've fallen away. Maybe they blame God for something that has happened in their life, or, or maybe they just were simply led astray. This is what this rocky soil means. Now remember, these aren't the worldly things. That's coming next. But what we see here is that tribulations and persecutions certainly can take people away. You see, this is why it's important that, that when we share Jesus with others, that we walk alongside them, to, to be with them when they face these especially tough times. Because in the church, at least in my experience, and I know it's probably in your experience too, sometimes these tribulations and persecutions actually strengthen their relationship with Jesus. We've seen that happen time and time again. And others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word and prove it unfruitful. Again, notice, fruit isn't even mentioned on the road or the rocky ground. But see, it shows up here. Interesting. What is meant by unfruitful? Well, I think when we get to the seed on the good ground, we see that that seed bears good fruit. But the seed that's in the thorns, well, it's simply not bearing fruit. You see, this is a challenge for us because this is where we get attacked much more because we live in the world. And if we are doing some self-checking, if we're doing some self-evaluation, well, we can simply see, are we bearing fruit? Or are the worldly things getting in the way of our lives for bearing fruit? See, this is challenging. This is challenging for you and me because, well, in our sinful flesh, we know that we are easily tripped up when it comes to this. And that at times, well, those thorns in our life, they strike us. And they cause us not to bear good fruit. But remember, in order for a seed to bear fruit, it's got to die. And that's a perfect example for you and for me. We need to die to ourself in order that we can actually be come alive and bear fruit in service to others. Left to our sinful desires, we want to be served. Just like the disciples when they were arguing about who is the greatest. We want to be served. We want that pat on the back. But kingdom work is about dying to self and living for Jesus. Because when we do this, well, that's landing on good soil. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. Again, the word is the same, right? They hear that word. They thirst for that word. They know that this word is what grows them, that strengthens them, that keeps them in that faith. Remember, after Jesus death and resurrection, he went to heaven and he told his disciples that it would be better for them if he goes to heaven. 
Why? Because from heaven, as he reigns on high, he sends his spirit into our lives. It's in the strength of the Holy Spirit that we go forth and bear good fruit. The Holy Spirit's work is obvious in us, right? It's when we're spending time in God's Word, when we're encouraging one another, when we're praying for one another, when we're ready to encourage and strengthen one another in our faith walk with Jesus. And as we grow in that faith and understanding of the importance of Jesus in our lives, we are strengthened and equipped to want to share that hope with others too. You see, we're equipped with everything that it is that we need, namely the Holy Spirit in our lives. Our practice is to continue daily dying to self and rising new each and every day to live our life in Jesus Christ, a life of service, a life that brings hope to a dark world. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us. For this week's announcements, we'll be offering our next new member Discipleship Journey training classes via Zoom online on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. beginning on September 28th. Contact the office if you'd like to join. You also have until this coming Thursday, September 23rd, to sign up for a two-hour time slot to help cover our booth for the Liberty Fall Festival. You can sign up on the St. Stephen website or call the office to volunteer. Finally, mark your calendars for October 14th at 6.30 p.m. We'll be having an informational meeting about our Generations Ministry Program and the financial planning services which we offer at no cost to our congregation. Check the Team Jesus News for more information on Fall Festival booth signups or any of our other events here at St. Stephen. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to pray for Ryan Larson, uh, just work and COVID related. Prayers for Tina. This is Kelly Scarrow's aunt dealing with multiple surgeries Prayers for Patty. This is Mike Snyder's mother with health issues. Prayers for Pastor Doug and his brother Rick. Health issues also. Uh, Rick is being moved into a hospice situation. These are friends of Kathy Roberts. Uh, Prayers for Jackie uh, with her kidney failure. And Pat um, continues to have some back issues. Also friends of Kathy Roberts. Prayers for Alyssa. This is Jim's former student that's suffering with COVID and having to take care of a three and five-year-old. Prayers for Chloe. This is the young girl we've had in our prayers before. Uh, Just continue prayers for her as she is going through chemo. Prayers for Margie. Uh, This is Linda Locke's aunt that passed away, so prayers for her and the family. Prayers for Nanette. 
a friend of Heidi Larson's that passed away from COVID. Prayers for Christine. This is a friend of the Scarrows that uh, passed away recently from cancer, leaving behind a 14-year-old son and husband. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Especially we ask you to bless and equip us so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus we have with others. Open doors to our top 10 list so we have opportunities to bring the lost into a closer relationship with your Son and our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would bring peace to the nations. Guide all the leaders of our world to govern according to your justice and righteousness. We know that you are in control of all things and that all things are working toward your greater purposes. Watch over those who serve in our armed forces, law enforcement and first responders, and our medical workers. Send your angels to protect those that are serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering. Especially we pray for Ryan, for Tina, for Patty, for Pastor Doug and Rick, for Jackie, Pat, Alyssa, Chloe. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially Margie's family and Nanette's family, Christine's family. Comfort them that they may find hope in the resurrection of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Paul, Margaret, Risa, Ellie, Justin, Lakin, Ben, Alyssa, Lizzie, Michael, and Judy as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. We rejoice with Steve and Angela, John and Diane, Gerard and Beth, and Dean and Dawn as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer, and into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.
He is for you. He is for you. 